How's it going everyone? It's Hugh Sweeney here again and in this video I'm going to share with you my thoughts on this BenQ monitor right behind me here. It's the PD2725U 27 inch LED backlit monitor. <laughs> Now this is the second time BenQ have sent me a monitor. I reviewed another one about two years ago. It was a 2K monitor and that was a photography monitor and this one is a graphic designer's monitor. So I don't know why they didn't send me a video editing monitor but to be honest with you, I think it's all the same. So don't be put off by that graphic designer's badge that they have on this. This monitor is suitable for photography, video editing, animation, gaming probably. And of course, what I'm using for here which is video editing. So after using it now for the last week, I'm going to share with you my thoughts on this monitor from BenQ. So it's priced at about $950, I think it's about a grand here in Europe, which is a reasonable amount of money, but at the same time it's sort of priced in the cheaper monitor spectrum. With color grading monitors you can spend huge amounts of money, but for things like design and photography, most people would fall within the grand sort of price range. So this would be kind of a little bit on the expensive side, but having said that it's not going to break the bank either at $950. So in the box comes the monitor itself, a nice spring loaded stand, it has the puck in there as well, the G2 puck which I had with my previous monitor, plus an assortment of cables including two power cables, a HDMI cable, DisplayPort cable, and the cable I use which is a Thunderbolt or USB-C type cable which is actually too short for me here so I had to use a different cable to connect it up to my iMac here. There's a little bit of paperwork in there including the warranty plus you have the factory calibration document as well. Now speaking of calibration, they do say that you don't need to calibrate these monitors because they come factory calibrated. Now if you are a colorist, it might be a good idea to calibrate it down the line. I'll get to that throughout the video. So let's talk about the build specs initially, the physicalities of the monitor. Well it comes together in three parts, it has the monitor itself, the stand which is a nice spring loaded stand and a metal base and it clips together within seconds and before you know it you'll have it up on your desk and connected to your computer. Easily done. Now when I looked at the finish on the monitor I felt myself being a little bit critical of the grey plastic outer shell but when you think about it it doesn't matter. You don't actually look at the back of a monitor. You only look at it from the front and when you do look at this monitor from the front you literally see 1.5 millimeters of that plastic all around. So I think the build spec is fine. It's not going to win any design awards but it looks good on your desktop. Nice and tidy. Plus the viewing area of the monitor comes within millimeters to the physical edge of the monitor which is great. Now it doesn't come with a glare hood like the last monitor I had from BenQ but I never actually used that. It's a bit awkward when you're using it in a two monitor setup so I was fine with having no hood. Like most monitors these days you can rotate it to a portrait configuration and because it's got a nice even bezel all around. It's going to look good in a portrait position. It's not something I'm going to use. It doesn't sort of click into a neutral, shall we say 12 o'clock, 6 o'clock position. You have to kind of concentrate to just get it right. It's a bit like hanging a picture frame. Now there's plenty of connectivity there on the back of the monitor. There's two USB type C Thunderbolt connections which most people will probably use. That is a Thunderbolt port and that's the one I've connected with here. Now you also have the older USB connections in there as well and believe it or not they still use the really old school little USB mini type connection for the puck. Now speaking of the puck it's great to have that instant connectivity. Now the puck is circular and it's very grey and sometimes you have to actually look at what buttons you're pressing. It's, it's a little bit muted. Sometimes you don't know which direction it's facing and I found myself pressing the wrong button sometimes. So I actually feel where the wire is coming out to get a 12 o'clock position on the puck and that way I know I'm pressing the right buttons. Not the end of the world, it's still a very handy device but I think BenQ should look at updating the puck a little bit. Maybe get rid of that old school USB connection, make it Bluetooth perhaps. Now it would be nice if there was a little bit of LED action in the puck as well and you could see, you know, when the lights are down you could see what buttons you're pressing. That would be a nice touch. There's a bit of customization you can get into there as well. You can assign different settings to buttons 1, 2, 3 on the puck. Now you also have that center button on the puck as well which will let you make any adjustments you want. Things like brightness or contrast or even volume. I have it set on brightness. I think most people would have that set in brightness. Now there's also a little custom key 
on the right hand side of the puck and that will let you you know toggle different inputs as well you can once again assign that to different settings now if you don't want to use the puck you could indeed use the controller keys on the back of the monitor to toggle between inputs say if you wanted to go from hdmi to thunderbolt or something like that so there's plenty of controllability between the puck and the buttons on the back of the actual monitor now the cable ports on the monitor are vertically aligned buried deep underneath the front of the monitor there so Connecting and disconnecting cables is quite awkward and you'll find yourself having to lift up the monitor fully and angle it out and even I actually even had to use an LED to see where I was going so you'll probably have to just connect it up before you install it. It is awkward. Now they have this piece of plastic as well which can be fitted to cover your cables. Say if you had sort of an open plan office and your desk wasn't facing the wall you could actually just hide a lot of the cables through this and on the center column of the monitor as well there's a little plastic clip and you can push your cables into that and keep it all nice and tidy so it's 4k it's lovely and sharp and when i'm looking at it especially with the small text and stuff like that it's right on par with the imax 5k screen here it looks lovely it's got a very low glare kind of feeling to it and the blacks seem super deep and i think overall it looks great the color looks nice and i would highly recommend we'll say getting one of these if you had a mac mini or if you were working off a laptop and you were using it as your main monitor i think it would be great for that now i have noticed that between the mac here and the benq monitor there's a slight little color shift in that the mac seems to have a little bit more gent more magenta and the BenQ seems to have a slight green tinge. Now, I don't know if the Mac is wrong or the BenQ is wrong. I think the Mac may have that little bit of magenta already. Now, it's only very subtle, and for me, believe it or not, it sounds crazy, but it doesn't matter that much. I actually use these monitors more for composition than actual color. I, I go between the iMac and the monitor for color. It's weird, I know, and sometimes I check on my phone as well. So the fact that it's got a slight different shift in color isn't the be all and the end all for me. Now BenQ have different profiles there and they've one called MacBook which matches in with your, your MacBook or in my case my iMac Pro but that too is a little bit off. Now speaking of different color modes, there's a lot of different color modes in there. You have animation, you have CAD cam, dark room, that's one I have actually set to one of my custom keys. DCI P3, you have DICOM, Display P3, HDR, Low Blue Light, MBook, Rec 709, sRGB, and then you have a user setting as well, which I assume is a setting that you can just uh, build up yourself from a custom, from tweaking it or whatever. So I kind of toggle between the MBook and the Rec 709, and I also use the dark room setting when I'm working in the evening as well where you don't want it too bright. Now speaking of brightness, it's quite bright. It's not as bright as the iMac, but it's very close. Usually colorists, usually people working on computers, uh, you're not working in bright light. I definitely am in here, so for me it's perfect. Now I usually have it at 100% brightness all the time. Now if you can't get enough controllability with the puck, BenQ have made available a software called Display Pilot, which you can download in seconds and install on your system and it will let you control the monitor so you can choose color modes that way and you can do things like split screen, picture in picture and even tweak the colors as well. You can also assign different color modes to different software applications that you're using on your, on your computer. Say if you're using DaVinci Resolve and then you switch onto the internet, it'll actually change the color mode to say night mode or something like that where you don't want to get much glare. Not really overly in need of that Display Pilot software, but it's a lovely thing to have. And I think uh, some people will use it. Now, it can do HDR. I've never used HDR. <laughs> This is where I'm outside my comfort zone. HDR, uh, calibrating monitors and different color modes and all that. I, I don't, I'm not the most technical guy with that stuff, okay? So forgive me for not going into the actual HDR spec. Are you going to need it? Are you going to use HDR setting? You probably might you, if you have the software to match up. But as of now, I'm just using it in Resolve and I'm editing in the, you know, the Rec 709 color space and it's working out great for me. Now, one thing in regards to the display of the BenQ PD2725U that I noticed is it has a slight sort of sheen to it at times when you're looking at it at certain angles. If I view it straight on, it looks nice and even and clean. But sometimes when I'm sitting here in front of the iMac and I'm looking to the side, 
certain areas, especially the bottom right here, look a little bit kind of muted or something. Like as if there's a little layer, a little sheen over it. And when I move my head back over this way, it disappears. So there's something going on with maybe the skin over the LCD display or some other part of it that's causing that little bit of a sheen to it. It's, it doesn't bother me, but I did notice it with the other BenQ monitor as well. BenQ are one of the largest manufacturers of monitors and it might be worthwhile for them to address that in future when they're making newer technology. Just try and have it like super dead even because they take huge pride in saying that their monitors are perfectly, perfectly even, that they don't have any dark or lighter spots. The monitor has speakers built in as well, but you probably won't use them. They're not great. Fine for reference sound if you want, but I would say just, you know, grab yourself headphones and your sound card. Don't rely on it for audio, but there will be people out there that might want reference audio and it's fine for that. So the fact that it has audio, some monitors don't, it's convenient. Now in regards to calibration, it's a gray area to me. It's something that I'm not familiar with. I've never calibrated a monitor. They do say that you don't need to calibrate these. They come factory calibrated, but other people will say that you do need to calibrate your monitor at certain intervals as the monitor is used because it will go out of line. My last one seemed to stay consistent. I'd never noticed any sort of shift. It, it always seemed to look the same. Should I? I probably should. I'm at the stage now in my career where I should know about calibrating monitors and I might have a go at this. I do know that there's a company called x I think. They have a, a device which you can buy for about 200 euros, $200, whatever, and you can calibrate your monitor there. But as of now, I'm just gonna run with this factory calibration certificate and trust BenQ and that they've done an okay job. I know that there's uh, some pro colorists that use BenQ monitors. Some people will say you need to spend, you know, 5,000 on a Flanders Scientific or something like that. And it has to have an SDI connection. It has to have a deck link that you shouldn't color grade professionally using a, a Thunderbolt connection. But for people like me, and probably you guys as well, you know, a lot of us, you know, most of our work is just designed for the internet. And most of our work is gonna be viewed on, uh, you know, phones and, and tablets. So it's almost as important to check your edit on a phone or on a tablet than it is to, you know, <laughs> check it on a, a seriously high-end monitor. So I'm, as of now, I'm not gonna get bogged down into, you know, spending huge money on monitors. I think that this level, uh, for me is more than good enough for the sort of work I do. So the BenQ 2725U 4K LED graphic designers panel gets a thumbs up from me. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. And if you have any questions on this, do comment down below. You can get in touch with me via my website or my social media outlets as well. And I'll get back to you, I always do. Thanks for watching guys. And if you haven't subscribed, uh, consider subscribing. If you know, video related, photography related content is of interest to you. And I'm Irish as well. I'm a bit of a, a break from the American and Canadian guys that you see all over YouTube, those camera bro dudes that are everywhere. So that's it guys, until next video, it's over and out for me. See ya, take care.